بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین In this session and maybe the next these two sessions based on what we've discussed so far in relation to the Tawheed of encompassment these two are the link the missing link between Tawheed of the encompassment type and Mahdiism so they're very important now it may be one lecture or two but it's an important link here now what we want to discuss is a particular station it's called the station of luminosity or illumination it's called the maqam the station of nuraniya nuraniya it's in the traditions and extracted from these traditions is such a station this station is also called the station of Walaya. we just have to see what exactly is meant here what does the station of Nuraniya mean we've established that the relationship between Allah and creation is one of encompassment and the verses which say that he is with you wherever you are or over all things he is encompassing and certain du'as which read that Allah's attributes fill or conquer the pillars of all things all existence existing things so with respect to any given thing, based on what we've said so far, and these verses, with respect to any given thing, be it animate, inanimate, be it material, be it immaterial, with respect to any given thing, Allah is its first, its last, the outer and inner. And this presence of Allah over any given thing, this conquering nature, this all-encompassing nature is called Welaya, it's like a guardianship in control, or it's called the station of Nuraniya, whereby it's called the station of illumination in the sense that Allah's attributes are illuminating in that given thing. That given thing is nothing but nothing but Allah's attributes filling it. It's all Allah's attributes. They are manifesting Allah's attributes. The very fabric of any given thing's existence, it's all his attributes. And therefore this is a kind of wilaya, a guardianship over this. The encompasser is the guardian, has custody of the encompassed. And it's also called the station of luminosity because any given thing, when you see it, it's, it's existing, it's present, because you're seeing it, it's, it's existing, it's present, it's apparent, it's apparency and presence is a result of Allah's attributes illuminating it, otherwise it would have been non-existent without Allah's attributes, that thing would be non-existent. But its existence, its presence, is a result of Allah's attributes reflecting and manifesting it. That's why Walaya and the station of Nuraniya is used interchangeably in this context. Okay. In Doi Kume we read Wabinure Wachekaladi Ada Allahu. And through the light of your essence, which all things are illuminated by means of it. The, they look the light of your essence. The light of Allah illuminates all things. All things are illuminated by means of this light. This is the light of Allah, His attributes. Or illuminating all things illuminating is used this nur because 
Lord is that which is itself disclosed. It's self-disclosed, but it discloses other than itself too. Zahirun binafse, muzhirun bighayre. It's self-disclosed, it's self-apparent itself. Light itself is apparent. Nothing, you don't need anything to make it apparent. But light discloses other things. And here, Allah, he, he is self-apparent, his attributes, and it discloses other things too. With any given existent, it's, you, you see it, therefore it's present, it's disclosed. It's by means of Allah's attributes which disclose all things. All things become disclosed through Allah's attributes. And that's why here in this du'a, By means of the light of your essence, all things are illuminated. All things become disclosed by means of that light. Allah's attributes disclose everything. Okay, so that's why we call it the station of Nurania. So we see it in the du'as and in some ahadith. And therefore, in, in the Quran, when it says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That, thus do we show Ibrahim, the malakut of the heavens and earth. The heavens and earth are present. They are present and have become apparent and illuminated through the attributes of Allah. We have shown him the attribute, Malakut here is in reference to the attributes of Allah. The inner dimensions of the heavens and the earth. That which fills the very fabric of the heavens and the earth. You see? And this can be shown so that he can be of those who have reached a certain level of certainty. And there are other verses which implicitly speak about this. Now, the point is that the, how Allah's attributes manifest in different things depends on their grid of existence. And the higher the grid of existence of a given thing, the more it will manifest Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So, what, in relation to any given existing thing, since it's existing, it's present, it's present, it's disclosed, it's disclosed through Allah's attributes, illuminating it. Otherwise, it would be non-existent. Now, the greater, the more value is when that thing's existential grid is so much that it manifests more of Allah's attributes. The more of Allah's attributes a given thing manifests, the more value it has. And here, who manifests Allah's attributes more? than the perfect human being, the infallibles, the holy prophet being the highest manifestation of Allah's attributes, then the successors of the holy messenger, and today it's the twelfth imam, the twelfth successor of the holy messenger. And here, to know the twelfth Imam, you have to have gnosis of the attributes of Allah. If you don't have gnosis of the attributes of Allah, that witnessing, that reality, the color of Allah, we spoke of this before, that inner witnessing, that it's all Him and you are nothing, if you don't witness the attributes of Allah by your heart, how are you going to know the twelfth Imam? How are you going to know the Holy Messenger? But how are you going to know the 12th Imam? They're all in line with one another. How are you going to have knowledge of this 12th Imam? Is knowledge only when he was born? What's going to happen to him? What are the signs for his coming? People are preoccupied with these kind of talk. Whereas the deliverance, when the, the coming of the Imam, 
where one can attain to deliverance is something that will happen one day in the physical realm but it can happen inside you too even though the physical imam has not appeared before us yet that will happen one day the earlier the better but can we have knowledge of the imam and see him now can, can you have gnosis of the imam without seeing the attributes of Allah what's the relationship between Allah and the imam the Imam is maximally manifesting the attributes of Allah. If you know the Imam, you know Allah. There's no difference between the two. Why? Because it's all attributes of Allah. The only difference is the Imam is a created being. The Imam is the worship of Allah. But he is maximally manifesting Allah's attributes. So in one sense, there's no difference between the two. It's just that one is contingent, one is necessarily existent otherwise there's no difference if you know the Imam you know Allah if you don't know the Imam you don't know Allah even though academically you say la ilaha illallah but it has no meaning many Muslims may say la ilaha illallah but they don't know Allah many people when they saw a successor of the Holy Messenger, they rejected him because they don't know Allah. They rejected him. It's all about the attributes of Allah. And it's the attributes which illuminate everything. Everything exists through the attributes of Allah. The knowledge of the Imam is dependent on this too. The knowledge of Allah is dependent on you knowing the Imam. Look, we have traditions here that read, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam said, Ma'rifati, Imam Ali alayhi salam, the first successor of the Holy Messenger said, Gnosis of me, Ma'rifa of me, bin nuraniya, through luminosity, through illumination, Knowing me through illumination, where the attributes of Allah illuminate and manifest. And we have Amirul Mu'mineen. It's a manifestation of Allah's attributes. Now Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salam is saying, knowing me through illumination is knowing Allah. Because he is maximally manifesting Allah's attributes. If you know Amir al-Mu'mineen, if you know Ali alayhi salam, you know Allah. If you don't like Amir al-Mu'mineen, you've rejected Allah. It, it's hand in hand here. If someone who is a manifestation of Allah's attributes, if you become an enemy of that person, you're an enemy of Allah by default. In Saqifa, those who rejected Amir al-Mu'mineen, they, they reject Allah. But 1400 years later, if someone says, I'm a follower of someone who usurped Amir al-Mu'mineen's right to be the successor, that doesn't necessarily mean, because they believe in a part of history, which is wrong, but they accept the first successor of the Holy Prophet as someone else, that's someone who usurped Amir al-Mu'mineen's successorship. Yes, they rejected Ali. They, they reject Allah. They're an enemy of Allah. But 1400 years ago, if we have someone from a denomination who believe Amir al-Mu'mineen is not the first successor, it doesn't mean necessarily they're an enemy of Allah, like the person who rejected Amir al-Mu'mineen at his time. Because that's a piece of history. Whether they're an enemy of Allah or not is how much of Allah's attributes have they incorporated? Have they seen? On a par with that, you judge people. Not on a because of a piece of history they've understood or not. Okay? They may accept something as a piece of history, but at the same time, they have seen the manner, they, they believe in the attributes of Allah. They may have even seen attributes of Allah with their heart. These people, you can't very simply call them enemies. They may be much higher than us. 
I'm your own Agni Singh, knowing me through illumination, meaning through the attributes reflecting in him, the attributes of Allah reflecting in him, is knowing Allah, because there's no difference between the two. It's all Allah's attributes. And knowing Allah, he adds, is knowing Allah, his attributes, but knowing deep down, gnosis, ma'rifatullah, not an academic knowing. Gnosis of Allah is gnosis of me, Amirul Mu'mineen, bin Nuraniya, through illumin illumination. Illumination of Allah's attributes again. Wahua, this is Ad-Dinul Khalis. This is the pure religion. This is Islam. This is the Hanif religion. What, what is the fact that it's all Allah's attributes in play? It's all him. And we have to acquire gnosis of the attributes of Allah through which fills all things, through which all things are disclosed. We have to see it. We have to witness it. On a part of that, we're a follower of the Imam of our time. And this is important. Now here, Inshallah, in this session, well, we're, we're coming to an end here. We have one other session too. With these two, then we enter the whole discussion of Mahdiism. And then, although many of you are astute, you've maybe got the picture. But then we'll see that the likes of Allah Metabo Taboi, Ayatollah Hassan Zada Omri, may Allah enlighten their souls through a verse of the Quran, how. Mahdiism can be in it should be interpreted they've extrapolated and it's all based on Tawheed and Mahdiism minus Tawheed what are you doing you're just playing around you're creating your own religion you're miseducating the people it's a pseudo thing you're creating for yourself then all the traditions on the Mahdi how are you interpreting them Things can get out of hand so easily and then this pseudo knowledge being a detrimental to your salvation, limiting your salvation and so on and so forth. Inshallah we'll continue in the next session.